Well, hello, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here. I'm excited, I'm excited, and I'm somewhat baffled. Everybody's talking all out there on social media and whatnot, people uh, giving their comments, pro and con, dealing with positions that we have taken at the church that are number one, nothing new, number two, biblical, number three, right, and I guess it's an issue because so few churches today are taking the biblical stand on black and white issues. Uh, well, my friends, I'll tell you something. I'm, I'm honored of God to be chosen. And I want to say this. I, I, I agree with the great Protestant reformer, Martin Luther, who said, if we're not fighting where the battle is hottest, then we are traitors to the cause of Christ. So many preachers today are preaching things that are unrelated to the defining issues of our day. And I want to challenge all those preachers out there. Hey, man, get off of those little uh, weak little boy sermons preaching about your haters and people who don't like you and telling everybody you're coming out, coming out, coming out, making them think that God, go God is going to make them millionaires and billionaires by tomorrow morning. And, you know, there's always an audience that fall for that stuff. But I'll tell you what, we need to speak up for the things of God. And the great Baptist preacher, the great Martin Luther King said, the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in times of comfort in times of convenience, but where he stands in times of controversy. Preachers, where are you? Men and women of God, prophets and prophetesses, where are you? Those of you out there in social media who are social media savvy. Now, there are many people who have called me. There are many people uh, all over the country who call me who are not necessarily social media junkies, but from their pulpits, from their radio broadcasts, from their areas of communications, they are, they are sounding the alarms that we stand with Bishop Wooden. We stand with the Bible. We stand with what is right. And yet there are many who are social uh, media, uh, uh, you're savvy, you know about that stuff, but, uh, but you, you, you're silent. And uh, you, let, me, let me tell you something. I'm going to be teaching tonight a teaching on these, what, what we call them, secret saints or secret uh, believers. Those who believe, but they won't speak up. Those who are afraid of certain associations, I mean, you'll benefit from them as long as they benefit you, but you won't, you won't uh, make a stand if it, it causes you to incur the wrath of that association. I actually just gave you the definition of the word falling away. It is to stand aloof or to stand away from Christianity for fear of the persecution that will arise as a result of your association with uh, God's truth and with Christianity. Well, my friends, I'm not afraid. I'm not ashamed. I am. I'm excited about the things that God is doing, and I can hardly wait to teach the word of God tonight. And uh, I'm still rejoicing on uh, uh, concerning what happened just last uh, Tuesday night. We were at the uh, a, at a prayer rally, a stand with brothers and sisters in Christ, white, black, uh, both both Protestant, Catholic people who are standing for life. Do you not know? That in this day and time in our country, we're having to pass laws in our state and we're working even in the state of North Carolina. And, and you see it in across the country where now we got to pass laws to protect not just the unborn, but the just born. We are actually in a day, to quote the mighty Johnny Hunter, where we are giving little babies uh, their death day on their birthday. We're killing them on their birthday. Recently, the governor of the state of North Carolina vetoed a bill that was sent to his uh, desk that simply said, now listen to this, if a child survived an abortion, that you would not treat the child like a little North Carolinian, like a human being, but that you would, you would not let the child live, give the baby sustenance, but instead uh, let the child die. The Senate overrode his veto 
Now it's going back to the House of Representatives and we need a few Democrats to get on board. Now, full disclosure, I am a registered non-affiliate. So I'm not a Democrat, I'm not a Republican, and I'm really not talking about Democrat nor Republican, but I'm talking about life. I'm talking about how we treat the most vulnerable in our society. I'm afraid, my friends, that we're becoming animals. I'm afraid that we're becoming savages. And, and many of us are, are, are speaking up, but how is it that you're silent on this heinous disregard for the most precious in society. The unborn have never robbed, stolen, killed, shot anybody or anything. They're innocent. The, the, the newborn, the just now born, wanted or unwanted, whether they were given birth or whether they survived an abortion, these are innocent human beings who have wronged no one. And, and listen, at the rally, so many said that they thought that this piece of legislature would be a slam dunk. dunk. Surely no one would disagree with if a child survived an abortion. No one, no one would disagree with helping the baby live. No one would have a problem with that. I mean, we're human beings, right? Well, we're wrong. There are people, including our governor, who he vetoed the bill. He said it's a bill that, that, uh, that prevents, uh, it's unnecessary because it prevents acts, things that doesn't take place. Well, if it's not happening, why not sign it? <laughs> I mean, what's the, what do you have to lose? The truth is, it does happen. And, and uh, in New York State, uh, they just signed a bill into law where the newborn have no protections and they celebrated it. Personally, I think that this is the, the left's response to the movie Gosnell, Kermit Gosnell, the great uh, serial killer, the abortionist, uh, was killing babies after they were born. And instead of people cringing for the wickedness of Gosnell, there are political people out there now who seek to make the behavior of Gosnell legal. Oh, my friends, my friends, my friends, we need to pray. We need to pray, we need to vote, we need to make our stand because I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I've said it and I've said it for years. When the fruit of the womb is not precious, the elderly aren't precious. When the elderly aren't, lives aren't precious, you know what? The teenagers' lives aren't, pre aren't precious. There's a reason why we kill each other now over arguments. There's a reason why people walk into schools with guns and just blow people away and just take human lives. And there are people who say, guns are the problem. Guns are the problem. I've seen what guns can do. Well, I've never seen a gun harm anybody, but I've seen a gun in the hands of a wicked person destroy lives. And when we cheapen human life for the unborn or for the recently born, like a minute ago, hey, you cheapen life for everyone. No wonder people are targets at the mall, at, at the churches, houses of worship, at the ball games, at the movies, in schools, wherever. We've cheapened human life. And it's time to become life-affirming people, life-affirming churches, life-affirming preachers, life, life, because we all want to live. We all want to live. So let me, let me say this. I want to challenge you tonight to come to the Bible study. Uh, I want you to join us on, on Facebook Live. I want you to tune in. Because let me say this to you. If God has called you and you are a minister, let me tell you something. You can't be a secret believer. You can't be the kind of person who says, I'm with you. And, and if you're involved in that kind of stuff and you do post and you do things like that, you can't be the kind of person who away from social media, you say amen and you say I'm with it, but you won't let your voice be heard. Now, I'm not saying this because I'm crying out for help. 
Because let me tell you, I'm doing good and that God is blessing our church. And there are many, many, many just like me who are fighting the good fight of faith. And I, I, I see some of the comments out there and I thank you, my brothers and sisters, for your stand. You know good and well. I don't mean any harm, but listen. There's no way in this world any Christian should participate in fasting uh, during Ramadan to a false god. That's not the way you win souls. And the lady was right who said that no Muslim would ever fast on a Christian uh, holiday. And someone wanted to know, well, preacher, why did you point out the name? Why did you call the name of the person who did it? Well, we've had a many great female singers and artists here at our church. And I didn't want anybody to maybe think that someone did something like that who didn't do it. And uh, uh, I, uh, so the point is, the point that we were making is simply this, that even though at the time the saints didn't know what was going on, the saints had the discernment to know that something was going on. And I pray that at your church, pastor, that you have discernment there where the members will know when it's not of God. Listen, try the spirits for many false prophets have gone out into the world. We got to know whether or not a thing and a person is of God or not. And if the individual is no longer practicing that kind of thing and they're going for biblical Christianity only, I say bravo. Uh, uh, keep singing, keep doing your thing. A tremendous singer, beautiful young lady, have nothing personal uh, about uh, uh, bad to say about her or anyone else. And, and by the way, uh, as I close, we do not talk about anything that is not public. We're, uh, our church, our gospel is not a gossip rag. We're not interested in digging up dirt on people and seeing what we can find about anyone. No, no. Uh, when things that we've talked about are things that people have done publicly. And when it's public, it's fair game. And we only responded to the young man because he posted videos misrepresenting our stand. Turns out that his argument was disingenuous and ours were truthful and in line with God's word. So we're going to be here tonight in the word of God. And uh, I want you to join me for Bible study. God bless.